England take on Slovakia for a place in the quarterfinals of the European Championships. Um, we brought you the breaking news at the top of the hour about Phil Foden returning to the England camp. And Phil uh, will be joining um, the rest of the group tomorrow. Let's speak to our England correspondent. It is Faye Carruthers and she's at the England camp now. Good evening to you, Faye. Evening, Sam. How are you? Yeah, good. Thanks for joining us. Uh, what's the details around Phil Foden's absence and his return? Well, we know he's been absent uh, to attend the birth of his new son, the third child he's had with his, his partner. Uh, we understand he's on his way back to Erfurt, which is the, um, uh, the area where England are training currently in the airport that they've been leaving uh, and going to and from the games from. And we understand he's going to be back with the team uh, tomorrow morning, which, of course, means that he should be available for the last 16 game on Sunday against Slovakia. Faye, I mean, listen, first and foremost, uh, congratulations to Phil and I hope everything's OK back home. Um, do you think now, with the, the performances we've seen in the first, obviously, the group stages of the, the, the tournament and England haven't been up their best, do you think in any way, shape or form this could uh, maybe influence Gareth's decisions if he's looking to make a change? Or do you think it's just Phil, Phil Foden's back, he'll start again the next game? I think he'll probably start the next game. He's been our brightest spark, I would say, in terms of uh, the attacking options that we've got, particularly in that last game. I felt as if we saw, you know, the best of Phil Foden that, that we get. Um, so, yeah, I would expect him to go straight into the lineup. But, yeah, I mean, it would be, it would solve a dilemma, which is how do you play Phil Foden and Jude Bellingham uh, in similar positions, which I think started to work in that game uh, against Slovenia the other day. I actually thought, you know, that they, they interchanged quite nicely. We saw uh, Phil further out on the left-hand side, hugging the touchline at times and then switching uh, with Jude on a couple of occasions. Obviously, we're still not getting the service into the box. They did overload that left-hand area and use it um, quite a lot more, but we're still not quite getting the best of England, as we know. But, you know, the best players uh, find a way to win. And Phil Foden is the Premier League uh, player of the season and one of our best players. So I, I think he'll probably go straight back into the starting eleven. Faye, I know you've been in conversation with Mark Gahey today as well, talking about his excellent start to the tournament. England, obviously, for all their issues going forward, have been strong defensively, and he's been telling you that the mood in the camp is good and that everybody's behind Gareth Southgate, that he personally owes the England manager a debt of gratitude. How, how does the mood in this camp, do you think, compare to previous tournaments under Gareth Southgate? It's slightly different, but I think that's because there's different personnel. You know, you've got 12, 13 players that have never been involved in a major tournament before. So that's obviously going to change the dynamic a little bit, which is completely understandable. But from the players that I've sat down and spoken to and from what I've witnessed when they've been coming into the castle that we're doing the media interviews with, when I've then seen them in training and seen them in the tunnel uh, post-match, they all seem pretty cool, calm, collected, not panicking, uh, but also acknowledging the fact that the um, performance haven't been good enough which you know is quite clear for all of us to see uh, but they're not panicking yet they, they they want us to stay patient and wait until the knockout stages to then judge them uh, based on that which I think is fair well that judgment's coming pretty soon isn't it because they play Slovakia on Sunday evening live on talk sport kicks off at five o'clock uh, what whispers are you hearing about potential changes to the team because Anthony Gordon came on just got three minutes and already sort of in that three minutes showed what he could offer an England team taking players on adding a little bit of pace to the attack Cobby Main who came into the heart of midfield in the second half and I don't think he did himself any harm in terms of carrying a, a pledge for playing the next game and what about Carl Palmer, who himself made an impact off the bench. Are there any rumoured changes? Or are you hearing any whispers that it's likely that Gareth Southgate integrates those players into the starting eleven? No whispers yet. Might start to hear a little bit more. Tomorrow is match day minus two training, which is closed to the media, so we won't see what happens there. And then we'll get another sight of them on match day minus one on, on, on Saturday before we then head up to uh, Gelsenkirchen. But you're exactly right. Cole Palmer and Kobe Mainu particularly uh, were really impressive uh, taking on um, the defenders of the Slovenian team. I thought Kobe Mainu probably cemented his place as... Uh, the number two midfielder next to, to Declan Rice. I thought when he came on in the second half, England were much improved. Uh, it was a more of dynamic second half performance than we saw in the opening two games as well. And then that left side is still a problem, isn't it? It's, it's still a big question mark. I mean, partly I've been wondering whether, you know, it would have been sensible with the personnel available 
to Gareth Southgate and his coaching team, whether going to three at the back would have been a better idea because, you know, we still don't know the fitness of, of Luke Shaw. I can't see him starting. Um, maybe we might get some minutes. I know that he has said after the match the other day that he's ready and raring to go uh, for the last 16 match, but he's not going to have 90 minutes in him. He's not played since February, so I can't see that. And if we did get him, is it a risk to start him? Yes, probably. Are we better off seeing how the game is going and introducing him maybe for 20 minutes, half an hour? I would say that would be better. Uh, but equally, I'm not a coach, so I don't know what's happened in training uh, that we've not seen behind closed doors, who's impressing. I, I certainly have I'd heard that there were a number of, uh, of players who've impressed in training, Anthony Gordon being one of them, uh, Cole Palmer another. They're itching to get on. When I sat down and spoke to Anthony the other day, he was absolutely desperate. Chomping at the bit was the, uh, was the phrase that he used. The, these are players who are used to being really important cogs in their Premier League teams domestically. And so for them sitting on the bench, it's really difficult. I had the same conversation uh, with Lewis Dunk, but Lewis Dunk has a different maturity and you know knowledge of what his role is within the, mm. the setup. Whereas the youngsters, they just want to they wanna play, they want to show what they can do. And certainly the other day, we certainly saw that from both of them, albeit Anthony Gordon's appearance was more of a cameo. Faye, we, we, before coming into the tournament, we've always spoke about Harry Maguire and how good he's been. He's never let Gareth down, and, and Gareth stood by his side pretty much the, the entire time. Do you think finally now we're seeing someone in Mark Gay, who, in, who in my opinion has probably been England's best player over the three games, we're finally seeing now somebody that's, that's ready to take over from Harry Maguire moving forward? Or do you expect when this squad, when obviously this tournament finishes, maybe Harry Maguire to come back in? I think Mark Gay is has cemented his place. I think he's been absolutely brilliant, arguably England's best player, actually. And earlier on in the press conference, he was asked about how John Stones and Harry Maguire have helped him, and he credited the fact that he's in this place, starting as a first-choice centre-back alongside John Stones. He, he cited the help of Harry Maguire and John, who before this tournament they'd only played twice together uh, before, you know, for helping him and explaining, you know, positioning, where he needs to be, what he needs to do from an England perspective and having those older heads to uh, to coach him through the changes. And, um, yeah, I, I think he is the future in terms of I England's back line. I think he's been superb so far, apart from that one mistake that he made in the Slovenia game, which he himself said, you know, he was actually, you know, he's, his, his worst critic, he says, and he was beating himself up over it. And Gareth Southgate apparently told him afterwards not to do that. Um, and other than that one little blip, which ultimately didn't lead to a goal anyway, I think he's been pretty flawless so far. That, that sort of idea of players beating themselves up or worrying about making mistakes seems to be something that we've noticed and picked up on over the last couple of weeks. It, it sort of perturbed me a little bit after the first game, the game against Serbia, that one of the first things out of the mouths of... Uh, out of the, it was out of the mouth of Jude Bellingham, actually, was the fact that it, he, the negativity surrounding the England team when they'd only just finished the game and no one had even started reporting about it at that moment yeah he did an interview straight away talking about negativity i i, I almost get the feeling that they've talked themselves into this feeling of being in under siege do you get that impression because it does have a very different feel to it because one of the great things that gareth southgate has achieved over his reign is that sort of link between the media the link between the the fans the atmosphere around the camp and openness mm. that seems to have sort of i don't know there seems to be a different tone i don't understand why that's happened yeah, there is a different tone, um, and I think that is because we've seen so much positivity over Gareth Southgate's eight-year reign. You just need to go back to when he took over um, and, and the shambles that was 2016 to look at how he's changed the dynamic and you know the culture um, outside and inside uh, the camp. That is turning a little bit, and that obviously is something that you would expect when a manager has been there so long and they've still not won anything. I can understand that part of it. And then when you have a group of players that, that, that there, is a, there is a slight split when you think about it. There's the players that have grown under Gareth Southgate and were part of 2018 and, and, and the World Cup. And then you've got the younger players kind of coming in and only just making their mark. And there's more of them than we've seen before in any of the other tournaments. Usually there's been, you know, a real core of, of the main group and then a few added in here and there. Well, there is a huge core now of newer, less experienced players. So you can understand that they don't really understand when it can turn and we you know we've covered England for a long time Sam 
when it can turn, it turns very quickly. You know, we saw that um, in the Hungary game, the 4-0 defeat at Molyneux. And I think we're having that now. But a really good performance and a win into um, the quarterfinals, if that happens on Sunday, it could potentially turn again because there are still a lot of people supporting the team back in Gareth Southgate. It's just that we tend to hear the negativity overriding everything else. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.